a reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The people of Judah and the citizens of Jerusalem said, come, let us go try a plot against Jeremiah. It will not mean the loss of instruction from the priests, nor of counsel from the wise, nor of messages from the prophets. And so let us destroy him by his own tongue. Let us carefully note his every word. Heed me, O Lord, and listen to what my adversaries say. Must good be repaid with evil that they should dig a pit to take my life? Remember that I told you before you to speak in their behalf, to turn away from the wrath from them. The word of the Lord. Save me, O Lord, in your kindness. You will free me from the snare they set for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. I hear the whispers of the crowd that frighten me from every side as they consult together against me, plotting to take my life. But my trust is in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. In your hands is my destiny. Rescue me from the clutches of my enemies and my persecutors. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. As Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples aside by themselves and said to them on the way, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priest and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and scourged and crucified, and he will be raised up on the third day. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee approached Jesus with her sons and did him homage, wishing to ask him for something. He said to her, what do you wish? She answered him, Command that these two sons of mine sit, one at your right, the other at your left, in your kingdom. Jesus said in reply, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the chalice that I am going to drink? They said to him, We can. He replied, My chalice you will indeed drink. But to sit at my right and at my left, this is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my Father. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at the two brothers. But Jesus summoned them and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and the great ones make their authority over them felt, but it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you shall be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. Just so, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Yesterday, we heard from Isaiah, the prophet of the Old Testament, who was preaching to the southern kingdom of Judah. And now today, we 
have another one of those great prophets of the Old Testament, Jeremiah. Prophets are spokespersons for God. They're not speaking their words. They're literally speaking the word of God. They are instruments of God's word. And it's not about predicting futures and gloom and doom, but a message that needs to be listened to very carefully. But unfortunately, as in they're true prophets of God and not false prophets, the words they speak are always very challenging, but also unfortunately, usually not listened to, ignored. As human beings, we tend to want to only hear the, the good news, but the good news with a small g and a small n, not the gospel news. The good news means, well, what's the easiest way? What's the shortcut? What button can I push to get it accomplished quickly and without any effort on my part? And true, maybe some things in this life and world require those types of conveniences, but when it comes to our spiritual journey, it's not easy at all. It does demand from us commitment. It demands effort and work, and it demands the cross. And that's what we're getting at in our gospel today is the cross again. It's Jesus's third prediction now of his passion. Jesus tells us it has to be the way though. Again, those disciples, James and John, were looking for the quick and easy way perhaps. In Matthew's gospel, he softens the tone a little bit. He has his mom doing the bidding and asking and they have their mom to asking instead. But nonetheless, that's what they were looking for was the glory and true, the glory will be there for us, but the glory doesn't come automatically. It doesn't happen just with a push of a button or simply words of mouth. It demands the cross. And the cross, of course, has to be always within our field of vision, not only in Lent, but really every day of our life. First of all, to identify the cross in our lives, the cross that each and every one of us must carry and at times those crosses are very heavy. Sometimes it feels as if we can't do it. And that is true, we can't do it alone and by ourselves. And that's why we need to call out the name of Jesus because Jesus is really the one carrying the brunt of the weight of that cross in our lives. But still we must submit just as he submitted to his Father's will. We must submit to that cross. And so as we begin this new day together in our Lenten journey, let us again identify the crosses of our life, embrace those crosses, and follow those crosses where they lead. Yes, to Jerusalem, but also ultimately to the glory of the empty tomb of Easter Sunday morning, the glory. The glory is ours as well, but the cross must come first. Though he transcends the entire universe, our Heavenly Father is attentive to the needs of each of us. Let us come before him then with our prayers. For the church, that the Holy Spirit may continue to inspire all the faithful to be servant leaders in their communities, let us pray to the Lord. For all government leaders, that Christ might instill in their hearts the conviction that their role is one of service to others, let us pray to the Lord. For Christians and other people of faith suffering persecution for their beliefs, that the Lord might comfort them and strengthen them in their trials, let us pray to the Lord. For our local parish community, that the Holy Spirit will imbue in us a passion to spread the gospel, let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for those who have died especially in this Mass. Let us remember the intention for the repose of the soul of George Bletchel and for our priest of our diocese who died on this day, Father Alan F. Walt, and for all our loved ones, that they might experience eternal happiness with our Heavenly Father. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers this day. Please answer them according to your will so that we might glorify your name always. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 